The Phineas map of 1531 clearly shows a great southern continent. If this southern continent is Antarctica, ice free, then it was mapped over 4,000 years ago and cannot be reconciled with known human history. This rewrites our entire civilization's narrative. I'll go into the details of its origin in the next video, but the most important question is quite simple. Does Phineas' southern continent resemble Antarctica? In this comparison, I'll use the names of landforms within Antarctica and highlight on both maps. I've geo-referenced the map and displayed it on an azimuthal equidistant projection alongside a radar sat image of Antarctica on the same projection for comparison. Remember, there has not been any geospatial transformations undertaken, so proportions may be dissimilar on the image that require later mathematical exploration. But what we are looking for is simply the resemblance in shape, the order of and amount of direction change of the coastline, types of arcs, islands, etc. Imagine the likelihood of all the infinite possible shapes with infinite complexity that Phineas could have invented that this shape was chosen entirely at random and any resemblance is completely coincidental. The general shape is divided into two orbicular regions, East and West Antarctica, connected by bays in similar orientation. Beginning at the bottom of the page where a 90 degree left-hand direction change is at the end of a large mountain range identical to Phineas. The coast continues left-hand convex arc in large radius and ends at a 45 degree left-hand direction change called Enderby Land. About a quarter of the distance along the arc is the Amory Ice Shelf that corresponds to the largest coastal deformation change in this arc on the Phineas map. This continues to a very distinct north-south facing bay called Atka Bay. This is heavily stylized on Phineas's map. The scale of distance from Atka to Enderby to our start point appears to be almost opposite between the maps, causing greater distortion between the maps as we approach Atka Bay. This I'll explain in another video. Then a 45 degree left-hand turn into a deep bay currently housing the Rhone Ice Shelf. The coastline on the east coast of this bay is generally broken into two straits at one third divisions with a central third forming a convex arc. This extends into a smaller orbicular landmass, West Antarctica, although the Palmer Peninsula appears entirely missing on Phineas's map. The bay between these landmasses is similar in proportional scale, called the Ross Sea. The western coast of this sea is proportionally divided by a protruding headland. At this point, there is a small island, now housing the Scott base, that is generally north of this midpoint. Then we return to the starting position. So is this a coincidence? Because if not, our civilization's orthodox history requires revision. There are differences between the Phineas map of 1531 and the Antarctic continent, most obvious the Palmer Peninsula, the scale and the apparent longitudinal stretch to Enderby Land. This is also apparent on other maps of the era that also show a southern continent. These discrepancies can be explained mathematically with a geospatial transformation and I have the transformation and a prediction to prove the Phineas map of 1531 is indeed based on an accurate map of Antarctica of remote unknown origin. Please like and subscribe to see the testing of the hypothesis in the following video. Till then.